Hello everyone, welcome once again to my channel. It's your boy Luis Portellas and for today's video we have a very special one because today we're gonna be talking about my top 12 of the best evening gowns for the preliminary competition of Miss Supernational 2022. Uh, the preliminary competition just happened a few hours ago and actually I really took the moment to go through each one of the candidates and write down those who really stood out in my opinion. So as usual, if you're familiar with the format of my videos, I want this to be an interactive experience. So as I will be presenting to you my picks and my comments for each one of them, feel free to give your opinion as well in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this type of video, don't forget to leave a like so that it gets recommended to more people and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one almost every single day. I'm also gonna be covering the swimsuit presentation as well as the Mr. category as well. So stay tuned for those videos as well. So without further ado, I will not keep you waiting much longer. I will see you with my topics right after the intro. All right, everyone, let's get right into it. So at number 12 on the list, we have Puerto Rico. And this is a country that we all know and love. Uh, we know that Puerto Rico also has a sash factor. So we always expect the girls to do so, so well in the competitions. And listen, this particular gown is really amazing. No exceptions here in terms of performance, in terms of wow factor. In my opinion, uh, this candidate has been overlooked a little bit so far in the competition, but if maybe this is a strategy, she might have decided to pick at the right time. I personally think that this is a beautiful, beautiful gown. I love that it's a blend between silver and a very subtle pink color as well with those little blue stones on the gown. Uh, it gives him the perfect balance of revealing, sexy and elegant. So for me, this was a home run. At number 11 on the list, we have Colombia, another one of the very, very hyped uh, Latin countries in this year's edition of Miss Supernational. And I think that she definitely lived up to the expectation. I'm gonna be honest, I was hoping for a little bit more from Colombia in terms of showmanship and just like her overall performance on stage. But this particular topic is really for the evening out presentation. And I think that what she's wearing, it's really effective. It's kind of a traditional pageant dress. I feel like we have seen different versions of this type of dress over the years, over and over. So it's nothing necessarily that will stand out of the crowd. However, it is giving us precisely the essence of what normally the Miss Supernational organization is looking for which is someone who is elegant someone who is classy someone who has a little bit of an edge but ultimately still feels like an approachable and relatable person now officially getting into the top 10 of the competition we have Peru. I think that Peru is doing an outstanding job in the competition and I mean that not just for the preliminary competition but also during the other events, during the other activities such as Super Chat for example. I am personally very very impressed because I feel like she has the perfect balance of beauty, intelligence, fitness and advocacy on top of that. So she definitely is the whole package. This gown in particular I think that the color scheme is very similar to the one that Puerto Rico ha was wearing. This gown is a little edgier. Uh, we can see a little bit more skin. I feel like it's more daring. And that's something that I personally also appreciate when it comes to the candidates that they're not able to uh, play with, you know, that they're not able to expose their bodies and just be confident in that way. I know that it takes a lot of nerve. Not everyone has that level of confidence. So whenever I see that, and girl, look at her body. She has definitely been wearing Breaking out and putting in the effort so you go girl I love this presentation and number nine on the list we have India so Ritika is going really above and beyond during the preliminaries competition to show that India is a powerhouse for a reason uh, I'm gonna tell you something just being fully fully transparent when it comes to my review of this I'm not crazy about the design of the gown I don't think that this is the most creative or the most flattering design that Ritika could have chosen to showcase during the preliminary however my opinion about this is that perhaps India decided to keep the best gown or like the showstopper moment for the finals. This is also a risk that she is taking because we know that preliminary is super, super important in order to make it into that top 15 or whatever top they decide to come up with. So I think that sometimes keeping your best garments, your best gowns for last is not the best strategy. However, let's focus on what she presented to us. We have a very conservative, very standard model here for her gown, but I think that the color is very interesting. It has this rich and metallic a blue color which when it's hit by the light it seems like it has some reflections of purple I love purple I want purple every day on every single one of my clothes I don't care everything purple yes so although I was not crazy about the gown itself 
Ritika's performance is really what is selling the garment and you know and this is one of the reasons why I think that she is such a queen because it's not about what you're wearing it's not about the brand or about the designer or about the style of the dress it's really about who you are and how you're able to bring value and attention to that garment with your performance with your confidence with your looks with how you behave on self publicly and how you sell it on stage so when you weight all of those things for me Ritika personally delivered a very very effective performance during prelims at number eight on the list we have Philippines! Alison Black giving us an amazing performance here in this beautiful gown. Um, I'm not so sure of the name of the designer who made this dress. I should look it up. But I heard on the internet that this gown was previously worn by Beatrice Luigi Gomez. I can definitely see, you know, the styling of the gown, like just the design of it overall, how it would really, really fit uh, Beatrice. This is really the type of silhouette that she would normally uh, go for. Uh, and I also think that it did a very good job in accentuating Alison's beauty. Now. Let's talk about something, let's address the elephant in the room when it comes to Philippines. A lot of people are mentioning uh, certain things here and there about the gown. First of all, I noticed that whenever she walked, there was... It seemed to me like the gown had a tendency to go up. So I don't know if maybe that was restricting Alison from having full control of the gown or even full control of her movements on stage. She needed to be careful in order to not expose something that she didn't want to expose. Uh, and at the same time, some people are talking about the fitting of the gown. I hear all of those points and I am not taking away from anyone's opinion. However, what I will say as well is that keep in mind that Alison had very, very little time in order to prepare for Supernational from the moment that she was crowned. So we don't know necessarily if these gowns were custom made for her. I don't think so. If this one's actually worn by Beatrice previously probably uh, this is a borrowed gown in that sense sometimes they try to adapt it to really tweak it here and there so that it fits Alison but it's not the same as when something is custom made precisely uniquely for you I also saw other people complaining about Alison's performance on stage and my opinion about that is that you guys really need to keep in mind you know the essence of the girl Alison was never like the show-stopping girl during Miss World Philippines or anything she was always the girl with the calm aura with a very approachable smile beautiful very delicate on stage and that is the reason why they crowned her so I don't really understand why some people expect her to be a certain way in the national pageant and then go internationally acting like a completely different person I personally really really enjoyed her performance I thought that she looked beautiful she looked like she enjoyed the moment and that's what really matters and the gown itself was it perfectly fit definitely not there could have been some improvements here and there but overall this is still a very very beautiful gown a strong piece and alongside most of the gowns in the competition, this was definitely a standout. So, Alison, number eight for you, baby. <laughs> Moving on to number seven on the list, we have a candidate that some of you are even announcing to be as the next queen of Miss Supernational 2022. I can definitely see the potential. However, I'll give you some of my opinions. I'm talking about Czech Republic. I'm going to say she definitely has the face of a winner. This woman, I can already picture the crown on her head and she will pull it up so well. In terms of the gown as well, I feel like it's definitely unique. Her gown is very different from everything else that we saw during the competition in the sense that most of the attention goes really to the upper part with the rhinestones and playing a little bit with the colors between nude and silver and blue. So I think that those were beautiful ways to accentuate uh, her facial beauty. Now, I'm going to say, just being honest once again, I'm not crazy about the performance on stage, like the way that she, maybe the walk or even just like the level of confidence. For me, it was giving me more of a model walk rather than a pageant walk. So I'm going to say that although the gown is very beautiful, the girl herself is stunning and she definitely has the face for a beauty queen. I feel like uh, in terms of the performance on stage and how she's handling herself on stage, we need a little bit more impact. Let's call it that. Moving on to number six, we have a very pleasing surprise. Argentina. This is one of those perfect examples that sometimes the fandom uh, can overlook a candidate initially just because her country doesn't have a sash factor. I think that Argentina definitely did such an amazing job in opening the show first of all so not only she's a girl that um, a lot of people might overlook at first but she is also the first one who will set the tone for the entire competition I think that she did an amazing job at that 
the gown itself is a very pageant gown it's very extra it's very out there it's sexy it's creative it has structure um, so I'm really gonna give her praise in all of those aspects because she definitely earned it she also had the performance aspect of it so she delivered something that was visually interesting for the eye for the audience it was eye-catching it was something that I really wanted to follow her performance from beginning to end didn't take my eyes of her it does her justice and she was able to sell the garment done let's go argentina at number five we have venezuela oh child listen when she came out with this yellow gown i was just thinking to myself she about to conquer this entire thing like she is about to take the crown back to venezuela she doesn't care i'm gonna tell you about ismailis i think that she is the perfect example of when to pick in the competition i remember at the beginning when supernational started uh lots of the fans were complaining about venezuela mm, what's happening the styling the communication skills what is going on i think that her trajectory so far in the competition has been exponentially increasing and so far for the preliminaries i think that she was one of the highlights of the night the gown itself, I don't think that it's anything like crazy whatsoever. It's a gown that we have kind of seen before. It's a yellow color, which I do appreciate. Happy color, very bright, and it really accentuates her beautiful skin tone as well. She looked happy. She looked like she enjoyed the moment. And of course, all the technicalities in terms of performance were right there. And I think that that was, for me, what really sold um, the performance for her preliminary. I also see a lot of people putting her as a potential winner for the competition. So I think that at this point, with the trajectory that she had, with all of the different um, challenges that she was able to excel at, it's really going to depend of the coronation night, the Q&A, specifically if she's able to make it to that point, and then the rest will be up to the judges to decide. Moving on to number four on the list, we have Thailand, such a beautiful woman. I'm going to say the first thing that I want to highlight here is that I appreciated the styling of Thailand because she looked effortlessly beautiful uh, from the moment that she walked on stage, whether it was during the evening gown presentation or during the uh, swimsuit presentation. It was like she was floating on stage. I also think that the gown that she went for uh, really highlighted that aspect of her performance and it was that it was so so smooth it was so delicate almost like she was just walking on air um, and the gun was just floating behind her definitely one of the best performance of the night for me similar to the case of Czech Republic I think that the gown they really just focused mostly on the upper part of the dress which I don't have a problem with that because they just really accentuated uh, the chest area and let's be honest she is so beautiful that she doesn't need us to really draw that much attention to any of the other uh you know aspect of her beauty she is just that good that beautiful and she is a standout person herself just even with a very simple gown she was another one of the candidates that was having a little bit of a technical issue here with the dress i feel like for certain moments during the competition depending on how she would move we will be seeing like some risky areas so Please just keep that in mind um, for the designers. Also, I feel like sometimes the fittings are so, so important and allow the candidate to not only try on the gown, but also perform with the gown to have an idea of what it's gonna look like on the final stage. That was an easy wardrobe malfunction, which thankfully didn't turn into anything worse. All right, now let's get officially into the top three of the competition for me. At number three, we have the amazing Vietnam. I love uh, Kim so much. She is a standout. She is one of the best in the competition, not just in this competition, but just, just one of the best overall. I remember from last year when Kim competed during Miss Universe, there was so much uh, criticism against her because of her communication skills, because of her look, if she, if they were, if she was being compared to another queen and all of that. But I think that she has just proved that she has what it takes you know, with any sort of styling, with any sort of gowns, that even though she might not be the most fluent in English, she is still one of the candidates to beat in the competition. So far, everything that we have seen from Vietnam is so extra, so out there, so elaborate. So I really appreciated that for the preliminary gown, she went with something that feels a little bit more minimalistic, a little bit more simple, because as I said, she is so beautiful that we just allow that to shine you know the facial beauty the physical beauty how toned her body is very simple makeup as well and of course beautiful hairstyling for her hair it is undeniable that for this competition it shows 
who are the candidates who really have experience and Kim just set the bar so high for the other girls I'm still shaking I'm still in awe of her <laughs> At number two on the list, we have none other than Indonesia. And oh my God, this was such a beautiful statement gown with a flawless performance that came with that. So honestly, my heart is so, so happy. Uh, I'm going to say, you know, about the gown in particular, I feel like it's just the perfect, perfect balance of sexy, playful, revealing, creative, artistic, and at the same time, elegant, luxurious, professional. It's just, you know, I'm in awe. I'm in awe. I'm in awe. Indonesia has been one of the most refreshing faces in the competition and I could say one of the best candidates as well in terms of having the overall package. May I dare to say that for me, she is even Miss Universe level in terms of performance and just in terms of substance. It's a really difficult thing to stand out uh, amongst candidates who have so much experience. We know that some of the girls on this list uh, have been already to Miss Universe or to other international pageants so coming into this one they have already a lot of experience and a lot to offer that some of the newbies or the queens that were just crowned international competitions don't have but oh my god Indonesia lived up to the expectation and I think that she even went beyond I really love the way that she was in control of the gown during her performance and just the way that she was able to handle herself during the entire moment always giving us the best angle beautiful smile, smooth facial transitions, as well as excellent body and physical technique for the performance during the competition. I'm really putting her up there in terms of my hopes for the final competition and the crown as well. So let's see what's gonna happen. But Indonesia, girl, you did that. <laughs> and finally, my number one pick for the entire evening gown competition. Who do you guys think is going to be? South Africa, Lalela Mswani. Chef's kiss. I mean, girlies, please go packing. Everyone else go home. Girl is not here competing. She just came to pick up her crown. Rightfully so. Oh my God. From the moment that Lalela came on stage, I was shocked. I was shaking. I was shook at the... If you guys remember Lalela's gown during the, the final competition of Miss Universe, she went for something that was extremely, extremely uh, simple, white gown, not very revealing. For me personally, it felt very conservative. This time around, Lalela is really going out there and playing with different elements in this gown that just make it so exciting. I mean, from head to toe, she looks amazing. A lot of people have been comparing her to Naomi Campbell. Some of them in a shady way, but I'm gonna tell you, if you put my name next to Naomi Campbell, that is always, always a compliment. I am never gonna be mad at something like that. So please compare Lalela to Naomi Campbell. In terms of the gown itself, there are so many different things that we can look at. First of all, the color. As I was telling you, purple is a yes for me every single day of the week, of the month, of the year, century, millennium. Give it to me. We can see some rhinestone, we see different patterns, we see some fringe. The gown is very extra as well because it adds on top of it uh, those beautiful, beautiful globes that just make it look so classy in my opinion. I know that it's not everyone's cup of tea. Once again, I don't expect this gown to be everyone's cup of tea, but I personally love it. I don't know what Lalela has been drinking, but she has mastered the art of hair and makeup and class and just performance. And I just want a sip of whatever that she is drinking. This is major, you guys. For me, I've been very vocal about Lalela and how I feel about her and what she represents in this competition uh, in terms of her personal story, in terms of even the story of Miss Supernational. So I'm just hoping for the best for her. This was a show-stopping moment and it just brought me instant happiness and excitement. And that's exactly what we're looking for in this type of girls. We want someone with the it factor. And then on top of that, they need to have the intelligence, the communication skills, the advocacy, and the entire purpose and entire package to be able to push forward the organization during an entire year of reign. This is it look no further if any of the members of the organization is looking at this video please take those things into consideration don't waste the potential of this woman please lali if you're watching girl we love you so much so there you go you guys those were my top 12 picks for the miss supernational preliminary competition more precisely the evening gown segment I was hoping to make this video under 10 minutes, but definitely I've been talking for like 40 minutes at this point. I just get so excited and so involved in these things. So forgive me if I've been talking too much. But as I said, I want this to be an interactive experience. I want you guys to let me know in the comment section as well. How do you feel about 
the gowns and the girls and the performances and everything else that you would like to express. While you're at it, like this video so that it gets recommended to more people and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one almost every single day. And please, uh, last but not least, come here and give me a hug. That's a little duration on the channel. You know that I love you, that I appreciate you. Thank you for coming and spending a few moments out of your day here with me. And until I see you next time, please stay safe, be kind to one another, sending you all my love, all my kisses. And I'll see you on the next one.